Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Day. Rare Whiskey Day. These are whiskeys that aren't necessarily huge brands. And they don't necessarily have uh, have enough of a name recognition or even enough whiskey being made to right. watch an episode in and of themselves. But damn generous donations, and we're gonna <laughs> get through them anyways. Now here's the thing: the next three are all from Mark Sorrell. Mark Sorrell. But he's a he's the guy who's repping these things and or started the company. Okay. So, on all of them. So is this like super long crickets? I don't know, we got three. Do we try to knock out all three crickets in one shot, or do we cricket every bottle? Like, like three back-to-back -back crickets, crickets is too, it's too lengthy of a crickets. We're just gonna increase the volume of the crickets times three. So, Mark Sorrell, you, 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 yeah, apparently, magnificent. you, yeah. well, I mean, You're he, repping he, he, he has a financial incentive he does, to yes. ascend his, what was he? <laughs> All right, so this is Saint Liberty. Yeah, this is a brand that Mark started. Okay, he's worked. Uh, he's sourcing whiskey. Yeah, and he's working with other distilleries to uh, uh, proof it and bottle it and get it ready. Right he's doing a series. The Saint Liberty series is supposed to be highlighting women in whiskey history. Okay, pioneer women in whiskey history. The word is unique. Oh, sh yes. This, so, this is a funky adventure. I'll tell you, I know what distillery this is coming from. Uh, it's in Texas. Okay. And it's not one of the normal ones you would know, but it provides a lot of sourced whiskey for people wanting to source Texas whiskey. There is like a, some kind of smoked woodiness in here. This is 100% Texas whiskey. Right. They shipped it to uh, Minnesota, uh, Montana. <laughs> oh, Minnesota. They shipped it to Montana. Right. A Montana distillery bottled it for them. Okay. Did they blend it there? Or did they just no, no, bottle no. It? They just bottled it. Just bottled it. Right. Okay. Now, so I'm I'm saying this smoking wood, like the burning wood, yeah. the ashes. There's a toasty, a toasted grain element in there too. You know what? Did you ever do the uh, the wood the wood burning kits as a kid? Yes. Yeah. It does smell like that. Yeah. Wow. You had that pin. What a memory. With the hot Dude, metal wedge. I have would... one in my office right now. Really? I have one of the kits. Yeah, okay. I used it about four years ago to grave some little baby barrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, man, it's but you, the... so you get the metallic smell of like a soldering iron yeah. mixed with the burning wood. wood. Do we know what kind of wood that was? What kind of wood was that? Just little, you know, small. No, I always use just like random pine. No, from but the Home kit Depot. actually comes with. Oh, I don't know. Certain kinds of wood. There's this weird molasses to the smoke too, though. Like a like, the molasses got uh, condensed down, burnt on a skillet a little bit. Yeah. The caramelization from the molasses is kind of starting to sizzle up. Oh, I I actually, I actually really like the flavor of that. It's very unexpected. Ooh. It's Ooh. like a smoky molasses coffee bean. This is what the smell makes you go. And then the taste is like, hmm. I didn't think I was going to like it from the smell. The, the nose is funky. Like there's the buttery. Like you got to get, it is, it's burnt butter. Yeah. Have you ever, um, it's like when you're doing a brown sugar right. butter in the stove. Yeah. But you accidentally burn it a little bit. I'm also getting some chocolate in there. Mm -hmm. Some burnt butter, some chocolate. This is almost, it's damn near like a chocolate pancake with the person next to you working on a wood burning kit. Yeah, that's right. I kind of like the hell out of that. I know, it's so weird. It's really drawing me Saint in. St. Liberty, Birdie's Bear Gulch. So they named it after Birdie because Birdie Brown was an African-American woman who was trying to make her own way in the world. And she was famous during Prohibition for her moonshine. Okay. Right? And uh, at one point, the law came over to tell Birdie, hey, look, you got to cut this shit out. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. Before they could stop her, she was working in the kitchen and uh, accidentally blew up her house <laughs> and died from the birds. Oh, Birdie, come on. Yeah, so, oh. yeah, Damn 1933. Damn it, Birdie. So we're honoring her memory uh. with this bottle, evidently. Okay, uh, dude, did you look at the proof? No. The alcohol percentage, what do you think the percentage is? Forty-three. Son of a, you looked. No. Eat a dick. Is it 43? 43.5. I was totally guessing. It's 43, so, because I was, I, I was it's gonna, not 46. I was going to say. It's a little hotter than 40. I was going to say the amount of 
uh, flavor and depth and character you're getting out of that relatively yeah. low proof. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I guess 43 because I didn't think 40, but it wasn't high enough for 46, and 43 is a common number mm. in whiskey proofing. So I went with 43. I'm also kind of excited that we at least know that it was distilled in Texas. Yeah. Was it aged in Texas? Yeah. Man, okay. That's impressive. I, I like it. Okay. Uh, now, here's a cool thing. He found an original old school prohibition bottle and then used it to create this bottling. Oh, that's cool bottle. Isn't that cool? Yeah, Alright, cool. we're moving on. It's got to... like the brown, almost opaque glass. This one I think Mark just reps, but is not part of the company. Fair Remember enough. when we get gold? Go! Do we need more silence for this one again or? No, we like we cranked up the we volume. We already cranked, we up, cranked the up the volume. Okay. We got the thing. Mark, uh, uh, remember we did the poured over gold. This is the same company, but they, this one's called Double Oaked, and that's okay. It's a, just a straight sourced bourbon. It's the same company as. I rock, now here's rock the, the thing. Hell out of the camera. Same company as this, yeah. Yeah, this okay. is also a Texas whiskey. Okay. It's Gold Bar. Remember that company is California, right? Yeah. But this is a Texas whiskey. Do we know which Texas whiskey this is? We do not. I'm guessing. Okay. I'm guessing it's probably the same one. Okay. We will find out pretty oh. quickly when we smell it, but they finished it in wine casks. The ca oh, okay, of course. This is... All right, there's, there is some it's commonality. There. It's very different. It's definitely different, but there are common threads. It's got the same soul, just like our weird versions of MGP that we keep coming up with. Oh, this one's a little bit less smoky and a little bit more like uh, cherries. Cherries, and it's a little bit more of like a sour ale element. But it has that same. Go back to your old glass. I kept these alive so that we could AB. Yeah. It's got that same root note. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, but it's it's candy and soft, not near the complexity. This is much more effortless. More sweet and approachable. But still a respectable amount of body and character. Yeah, dude. Whoever's making this original whiskey in Texas right. is doing a good job of having their own profile. What do you think the percentage of alcohol is on this? I would guess lower. Uh, I'm gonna guess 40. 46? What? It is. No! It's, it's more velvety and it creamy does. and smoother it and drinks thicker, more and it, but it drinks a lot more effortlessly. Mm -hmm. Not that the first one is hurting you, but you just feel that character of the smokiness. Man, I'm, I'm trying to go back thinking 46, I'm still not getting it. Mm -mm. That's just so, there's a little bit of a bite tang Ooh. and like three fourths of the way through, Yeah. but it goes away so fast and you're There's, left with this sweet licorice. And it's, it's what it is. I'm left. I'm left with a toasted almond. I'm left with Twizzlers. Mm, right. Not. I mean, that's too dramatic. A hint of the direction of sweet Twizzlers, but the waxiness is there too. I'm getting more of a like a natural toasted almond. You, I think so, we both get the waxiness. You're translating that waxiness to nuts. Yeah. Let you know that nut, the flavor of the wax and, and almond and walnut. I do know nut. And wax. I'm translating it to. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I can't come back from Netflix. There's nowhere to go with that. Okay. Both of these are impressively nice. Honestly, I, I'm gonna tell you, uh, just looking at the packaging, mm -hmm. I'm thinking there's, there's got to be some overcompensating going on. Because oftentimes, whenever there is a brand that you haven't necessarily heard of, and it's in big, beautiful, or elaborate, ornate packaging, it's like uh, they're trying really hard to compensate for the whiskey not being that impressive. Right. That's actually impressive whiskey. I like. Oh it. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the packaging uh, was like, damn, that's got some money in it. Wherever it's coming from in Texas, and uh, and obviously they're okay with sourcing. Yeah. I would kind of like to talk to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? This is Beer Barrel Bourbon. This is from New Holland. Now, yeah. if you ever drink craft beer, you probably know the name New Holland. You oh. ever seen a New Holland label? Oh, okay, you're saying words and I'm thinking about whiskey. Yeah, so the New Holland guys, they were beer guys, right? So New this, Holland beer guys. This is an exciting moment because I think, for whatever reason, these two whiskeys coming back to back. Whoa! Yeah! So we're talking about into the spectrum, man. It's like apple juice and old lady perfume. You no, know, this is pear in like a like a bubbly a champagne, like a white wine. Oh, I get Ooh. the champagne all day. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's a bubbly. Honestly, if you put this under my nose and I was blind, I may say something leaning towards like a pear, fruity, champagne, white wine direction, what's and not the, necessarily um, whiskey. What's the non-alcoholic one that kids get to celebrate like New Year's? The oh, Martinelli's. Okay. It's the sparkling apple. Sparkling you know, cider, yeah. yeah, sparkling cider thing, yeah. but it's all, it's like your children, you can have wow. your frothy drink too. That is, so we're talking about, we're on the other end of the spectrum now. So far. Other end of the spectrum. It is so perfumed. Yeah. Wow. And really, you can almost smell the carbonated bubbles in there. 
Yeah. That's it's, bizarre. It, and, and it's almost, a, you know, you ever have like a really fruity white wine? Yeah, really not, Like not dry at all. It's just a dense, I mean, this light, is leading into like gummies. Clean fruits. Like the sweetness of like gummies yeah, or fruit. It's or damn fruit near, rollers. it's damn near getting there. Yeah. Now, New Halt is in Michigan. It's a uh, craft beer yeah. company, but they've also gotten into spirits. They do whiskey, gin, rum, vodka, and brandy. Okay, so, oh, I would not have thought. I could absolutely think they have had experience in other liquors, but not necessarily the whiskey is just something we do along with other things. Because now, the cool thing about this? The, my, my point is, oh, you're this right. doesn't uh, smell, I haven't tasted it yet, this doesn't smell like an afterthought. Because a lot of times you'll have a distillery doing a yeah. bunch of different things that also make a whiskey. It's like, yeah, it you obviously like love the other things more. Yeah. Okay. So here's the tr here's the cool thing. What they did was they have a beer that is a stout. That's a interesting. Really nice, pretty. Um, and they age they age it in beer barrels. Rotundly sweet. Yeah. Rotundly. So it's a it's a whiskey that they made that says they distilled it. It's a whiskey that they distilled, finished in beer barrels. The taste, less than half as interesting as the nose. I agree. The taste is simple and sweet. The journey is in the nose. The nose is yeah. magical. The taste, it's, and I think, wow, honestly, if the nose was more similar to the taste, I may not be as disappointed. I would have been, I may have been like, oh, okay, you know, that's fine, that's fine, this is decent whiskey. But because that nose was setting, setting me up for so much glory, and it didn't show up. Yeah. So it's it's Dragon's Milk Stout. Okay. That it's finished in. Yeah. And it just it just rounded out everything. Yeah. It's just a little bit too um, melted together and homogenous with like a nice. Sweet... Yeah, you're right. The nose was much better. There's still the pear still shows up. Okay. Let this is. Uh, let's move a little more quickly here. We're just burning daylight. So. Pear shows up. Still, These two still got a white wine vibe, but it's not as um, elaborate as the nose. Go ahead. I'm excited about this. I'll tell you why, even yeah. though I haven't tried them. Yeah. This is from Mike Callahan. Both of these bottles are from Mike Callahan. Mike Callahan, you magnificent bastard. Fight. Okay, so this is um, way up there by Fairbanks. Okay. Right, it's a little baby distillery in Alaska. It's only been around for a few years. We're in Alaska. Yep. Okay. This is their new make, and this is their malt. Oh, oh. right. So the AB. Now here's the trippy thing. I'm gonna pour one in each glass. Yeah. Uh, now if you remember, way the hell up there, we always talk about daylight and temperature ranges and all these kinds of things, right? <laughs> Keep in mind that these guys during the winter have four to six hours of daylight, and during summer have like 20 to 22 hours of daylight. Right. How do you think that affects whiskey aging? So there's daylight, but in my mind, I was always suspecting that temp ah, that temperature is going to have a bigger, a bigger effect than just light. yeah. But think about that. Daylight is going to have a temperature range, right? Oh, yeah. And so when you're winter most of the day, yeah, then you're going. It's going to be cold a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, not to, not to mention it's freaking Alaska. Yeah. This is only one year old. Really? Yes. That much color? Yes. One year? Yes. And not only that. That Ty Phelps would love this. They do every single part of the process themselves yeah. on their own farm. They grow the barley, they oh. harvest the barley, they malt their own barley. Yeah. There's pictures on the website of him and his son with rakes. Interesting. And a fan. So Ty Phelps, Malting the barley. Ty Phelps is the uh, Andalusia, whiskey Andalusia whiskey company. company here in Texas. Yeah, they do absolutely everything on site. Interesting. So I wanted to try the moonshine first. Okay. Yeah, that smells like a funky moonshine. Yeah, in the moonshine, uh, there's nothing, you know, weird or extraordinary. They didn't flavor it. Yeah. They didn't add any sweetness. They did proof it down to 40. Really? Oh, These are wow. both proofed it down to 40. I really like that moonshine. It's a really nice cut. It's kind of melon oh. and slightly sweet, a little bit earthy. Yeah. Like That's a, a solid moonshine. Like a sweet, like a sweet milkiness right in there. And and because it's so young, you can smell the moonshine in the made spirit. But it, it just is, added the vanilla and honey. But as much as you can find where it came from, it is dramatically different. Even Ooh. even just that one year. Man, I would love to see what happens with these guys with older whiskey. Wow. 
because I really like the direction that's you're, headed. You're starting to get the gleamings of a cinnamon. Yeah, but it does feel like we open the door too early. It's like when, you, uh, when you're when you cooking right. or uh, baking something right. and you open the oven to check on it and you're like, ah, oh, it's all still raw dough. <laughs> and you but, shut it. But the direction it's going. And you the can direction it's going is perfect. There's like almost a... Uh, like a nutmeggy quality to the wood but, notes. But bitch, that's dark for one year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's Texas dark yeah. for one year. And I then, wonder what size their barrels and are. And then a little bit of a base layer of an antique wood, an old, yeah. old dusty wood there, antique wood. I actually really like the direction that's going in, and the the, the notes that are starting to show up. I think will develop. Yeah, a little time will develop beautifully. I think. Uh, do you know where this is made? What town this is made in? Fair. No. Thanks. No. North Pole. North Pole, Alaska. But it's it's just down the road from Fairbanks. Okay. And Santa lives there. I wonder how many times they've heard that joke. They name themselves North Pole Whiskey. They they're just begging for it. But you, but we're not. <laughs> we're not is the point. We don't need to hear it. Son of a bitch. Oh well. What okay. are you gonna do? All right. No, I I, I like that. The A B. If you ever have an opportunity to try a whiskey that has been aged a few years, it's my favorite thing. And the new make that it came from, I wish more distilleries would do that. It's always surprising. Yeah, it's always surprising. Because yeah, we've got Annandale down there. The amount that it evolves and changes, but you can still find elements, absolutely elements that uh, were in the very beginning. As we started to distill our own stuff, I got obsessed with finding people who would release a new make and an aged yeah. side by side, yeah, yeah. and I always buy it. Yeah, yeah. So that I can see the directions sure. of things, yeah. and as we're distilling things, I get a, you know, a framework in my head. Yeah. Uh, at some point, we're going to do Annandale, who sent us a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. They, just, they actually sent us. Yeah. Eric Waits actually there, yes, not like this week, mm -hmm. and um, they sent us all these new makes and then their aged stuff. It's a fascinating journey. We were at Teeling Whiskey Company in Dublin, Ireland. Yeah. In the episode we just released on our other channel, the Whiskey Treb channel, we we're talking to the master distiller there. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how they hunt for and explore and discover new interesting whiskey flavors. And one of the questions we asked him was, uh, we asked a lot of questions we knew the answer to, but one of the questions we asked him was, um, can you find notes in the porridge? Not even the new make. Yeah, just the just mash. The grain has been you know, present, presented with some hot water and starting to mix together. Can you find flavors and notes in that that end up all the way through the, the age. fermentation, through the distilling, through the aging in the barrel that still show up. And his yep. answer was without hesitation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. It's been a good Rare Whiskey Friday. Indeed. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I'll fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.